We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine, that's Emily, and I don't know about you. Well, I do know about you, Emily, but uh, you, the listeners, I don't, I don't know. Do you, does anybody remember what happened at Imola? Because that, other than the end of that race, that was does just really kind of care? <laughs> Honestly, I mean, honestly, I didn't miss it. I didn't miss it. Like we didn't race there last year for catastrophic flooding and I could have gone without it this year. Yeah, it was not my favorite race and I'm not saying this as like a Red Bull fan seeing basically both my Red Bull drivers struggle but like it just thank you wasn't a great race no it wasn't yeah the Red Bull was trash this weekend besides like okay you say that but then Max gets pole and he also wins so Um, it wasn't easy no it wasn't I would say up until like the last what three laps of the race it sucked (laughs) It was like 10, or at least it was 10 when I noticed that Max's margin started going down. And I'm sitting, I'm sitting there, and this was before TV picked it up or before TV started talking about it. And I was like, Max is up six seconds. And then I looked and I'm like, oh, Max is up five and a half seconds. Max is up five seconds. And then they started picking it up on the broadcast. And I was like, oh, I think we might be into trouble. I saw that. And then I was like, and then I was like, all of a sudden it was like, three seconds and I was like oh my gosh Lando can you pull it out can you go from zero to hero two weekends in a row um yeah I really wanted Lando to pull it out at the end but I just knew he didn't have it in him unfortunately yeah I think he he made a couple key mistakes you know in in that last lap trying to or the second to last lap to try to get you know up up to max um and just that track is so difficult to overtake on if you're like it's so hard really good um yeah. and it just it was it was not easy and another thing that was really not easy and we'll just dive right into it is dealing with today's tv direction because yeah. that tv direction was oh, awful so bad i just want to know who akon was paying to have him tele broadcast for as long as he was today because like no one cares, and I wanted no. to see the fight between Lando and Max, and it was just like, we're going to take a look at Akon, and I'm like, no, let's not. I mean, I know like it was an LP literal weekend, worst time. but still, oh, God, I know. Yeah, yeah. I... Honestly, and then the thing that bothered me that always bothers me is when they take forever to put up the intervals on yeah. the driver tracker on on TV. Um, they, you know, I the gap to leader is is a very interesting number like statistic, but I care about what the interval is between each driver, so I know which drivers are in DRS without having to do math in my head. Yeah, no, I. I hate when they don't do driver to driver and they just do the leader because then I'm like sitting there trying to figure it out and like doing mental gymnastics of like thousands of seconds. So dumb. yeah, I don't. But I just I would say overall. No, I would say overall I wasn't impressed with like any of the Sky Sports direction, but I will say Harry Benjamin did a really good job filling in for Crofty. Oh, hundred percent. He, I was really impressed. Like the, the way that you have to be aware of everything that's happening all at once when lights go out is astounding to me. And I don't know how he was able to keep track of that, but he was you right. know, reading off like, and it was a very clean, you know, opening lap, those opening turns, um, which definitely played to, to his favor, but he did a, he did a really good job on that broadcast this, this whole weekend. He did, and I think we both, or like, I don't know if it was you or me or both of us at the same time, we were like, okay, this is going to be a good sub. Like, this is a really good first lap. He knows what he's talking about. Like, this is, we can handle this. I I give my stamp of approval to Harry this weekend. He he did a very good Wholeheartedly. job. Wholeheartedly. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, even considering the the tricky broadcast with, like, going to, to random cuts or going to the race replay, uh, the, the start replay, and then not going, and then going back to it, randomly looking at Pierre Gasly doing something for whatever reason, um, it was, you know, they he, he, he managed it very well, yeah, but... He did. 
it was it was giving like Monaco TV direction before Monaco, you know, relinquished the TV direction to Sky. And if you don't know that historically, you know, Sky Sports does the broadcast, except at Monaco, Monaco had its own TV direction um, and the TV direction at Monaco was always bad until the last couple last of year. seasons when Sky, last year is when Sky's taken over. And I was like, did they like dig up the old Monaco director's crew for this? Because like there was a point where they had like the helicopter camera was literally just looking at trees oh, during qualifying. So bad. But do we know, was that a multi-year deal or was that just a one-off year contract? God, I hope it's a forever thing because I, I can't. I was thinking about that because all, so I watch on ESPN, uh, which is the Sky Sports um, broadcast, Speed. but they've been like promoting Monaco next week because it's like the glitz and glam of Monaco. And every time I see it, all I can think of is like, please don't have it be the Monegasque TV commission or whatever they're called because they used to run it all themselves. Um, I don't remember if it's a multi-year. I feel like it's through like 2030, but I could be wrong. We That's can only hope. About it. But, um, yeah. yeah, I can't wait for, can't wait for that. Honestly, I'm more excited to talk about Monaco than recapping Imola because nothing happened. It was a nothing it, yeah, burger. It was, it was just, it was really, it, it was a nothing burger. It was not a great race. Was it race. worse you it, waking track, up at the ass crack of dawn? <laughs> I mean, it's not the worst thing I've ever woken up for at the ass crack of dawn. So, you know, it, there you go. it is what it is. Uh, I know that they all can't be winners, but the, what the Monaco, or not the Monaco track, we're not at Monaco yet. But at the same time, this track at Imola is very, is very similar to Monaco, except, it is, yeah. Um, Monaco is a street track and Imola is in the forest. Um, and it's, we're, we're going to have a lot of the same issues at Monaco, at, but at least Monaco is fun to watch. And that's the thing that like hurts my heart is I do love this track because it's like a good old school track. We have elevation gain. We've got good corners. We've got crazy gravel traps now. And yeah. it's so narrow that you can't pass that's the only bad thing about it because we were t I was talking about this with you earlier today too if you could pass more easily on this track I think it would be so much more entertaining but almost everyone held position like outside of pit stops and stuff like that because you can't pass there's like two places you can pass yeah, there there was not a lot of true overtaking. Oscar mm -mm. had had a true overtake. Um, Paris had a couple true overtakes, but it was it was really just the the pit stop Saturday. So this is all stuff that we're going to see next week in Monaco. But yeah. at least we like Monaco. At least it's pretty, and there's yeah, boats. Monaco's and my the mom's favorite pool. because she's like, oh look, they have money. That looks like they're having fun. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, well let's. Just do a quick recap then of Imola, um, just because we're obligated to. But hopefully you all watched. If not, I don't know why you're listening to our podcast, but that's okay. Um, Max obviously did Max things and came back from Miami and won. He also got pulled. Yep. Honestly, I have nothing else to say besides the – and hopefully you all know this, but besides the fact that he was also simultaneously competing in a 24-hour sim race – while racing yeah. at Monaco so he's on a team of like I think four there's a team of four doing this 24 hour um Nuremberg sim race right we all and know Bishop Bishop food um and so it just happens to be on the same day as Imola and so he was like racing back and forth to like practice and compete this whole weekend. So, um, and in case you're wondering, he did also win that. So congrats yep. to him. Um, which yeah, it's just so wild that he is how he is, but yeah. So Max did Max things and won two races in one weekend. Didn't even know that was In possible. one day. In one day, not even in a weekend. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. I, th I think I'm pretty sure that, that the sim race was done like a couple hours like he 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 they they won and then he left for the track right because he had to race back from quali to yeah get back yeah so it was like overnight i think so like imagine just not sleeping and then winning an f1 race yeah in a car mm -hmm. that has not been cooperative all weekend like 
I don't know how the Red Bull that we saw in the practice sessions was the same Red Bull that we saw in quali and was the same Red Bull that we saw, you know, up until those last 10 of 63 laps. Yeah. Well, and I, I, so we say that we don't have much to talk about, but obviously we always do because we're us. But I also love the fact that in qualifying, Max goes, wow, I actually had to work for that one. It's like, yeah, he has so much untapped talent, not untapped talent, but he has so much more gas in the tank, let's say, than like anybody. And he just is Max. And yeah. like doesn't have to, it seems like he doesn't even have to try, except this weekend he's like, wow, I actually had to work for it this time. <laughs> Yeah, and his, his some pressure on him. His reaction after qualifying was pretty entertaining, considering it's like, oh, this was fine, um, yeah. and I was like, oh, wow, that was a lot. And then he now has dating back to last year in Abu Dhabi, eight consecutive poles, tying Senna's record that he set in eighty eight and eighty nine. And this weekend was all about you know remembering Senna and you know thirty years on and all of that, um, but. Yeah, the, the the timing of it is is pretty pretty wild, and it's just yeah, it was it was pretty much what we expected. You know, Max is Red Bull doing Red Bull things, and then Lando and McLaren said, "Ooh, game on." Yeah, no, Mc, McLaren is looking really good. Um, to quote Carlos, "Wow, McLaren's fast." Um, <laughs> they looked really really good. They brought a few more upgrades this weekend, I think, and I know that they brought the full package to Oscar this weekend. Um, right. Oscar looked amazing, but Lando did end up in P2 with, like, maybe a sliver of hope that he could actually overtake Max at the very end um, to get back-to-back -back wins. He didn't, but he did look really good. The McLaren looks really fast, It just in general. Yeah. Both of the McLarens do. I mean... Piastri qualified higher than Lando, but because he had a three place grid penalty, he was um, he ended up taking off in P five, which sucked. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I think that McLaren might be a force to be reckoned with this season if not if people can't bring updates to match him. Yeah, I I really think that we could see McLaren, you know, taking on the Ferrari pretty seriously in the constructors championship based on on their their pace and their performance you know obviously oscar struggled to get past carlos and ultimately couldn't until you know carlos got screwed over by ferrari strategy itself um which we'll talk about that in a second but yeah i i really think that we could see a you know a really fierce battle between mclaren and ferrari for that potentially second spot in the championship um especially if mercedes doesn't get its life together well i'm gonna float something too i mean if if max keeps doing max things that's great but if checo doesn't start carrying his weight and oscar and lando keep really performing well I don't know. Ferrari seems like they can't get their scruples together. Go figure. Yeah. So it it's I personally see it maybe coming down to the wire with McLaren and Red Bull for constructors. I think it's a little too soon to tell for that, but I think that it's definitely a possibility. Um, yeah. This is like but, it's way too soon, but yeah, just based on how the cars have ran the last two weekends. I think Red Bull's got better than Red Bull. Red Bull's got some some work to do. No, the 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 updates that Red Bull brought, obviously there was some sort of disconnect with, you know, Red Bull actually being able to function with those. So we'll see what they're going to be able to do between now and next week in in Monaco. Speaking of Monaco, did anybody remember that Charles Leclerc finished P3 cuz Apparently he did, and it was probably like the, the second most anonymous P3 ever, and the first one was last week in Miami. Honestly, Charles and Lewis deserve each other. They are going to be the sneaky point teammates next year. Yeah. And it's like, oh, wow. you Like, I'm sure Hamilton got a lot of points this weekend. I couldn't tell you where he ended up. He was That's he's so anonymous. Question. But I think he got like P five, P six, no P six, because I think he got like P six or P seven. Um, he finished P six. Yes, yeah. and and George finished P seven. Yeah, yeah but so look was, at those key points. 
yeah, Mercedes. so anonymous and like just like Charles and I think I think we you and I talked dur- at the beginning of the race that like Charles was just gonna kind of be off by himself you know in p3 and that was just gonna be whatever for him um but I felt like you know his performance was just completely irrelevant to the race as a whole but I also think that he owes a lot of thanks to Carlos who sat and defended Oscar Piastri for like the entire race um, yes. because all of that defending let Charles just like coast off into the sunset and land on the podium. Not that he yeah. like didn't do anything, but I mean, Carlos is very good at defending and I think he really played the team game today. So Yeah. Well, Carlos played the team game and Carlos has been forced to play the team game the last couple of races because yeah. he really hasn't been helping himself with his quali form. Um, I know. Cause Ferrari is never going to let Carlos ahead of Charles if, you know, if he's not already in front of Charles. Like, it's just never, like, it wouldn't happen anyway, but it's especially never going to happen knowing that Carlos is leaving and they have committed to, you know, Charles staying at Ferrari until, you know, what, 2029, whatever. Um, So Carlos has to do some work to make himself the dominant force that we saw the first few races of the season. Well, and the thing that makes me, like, frustrated is at the start at Lights Out, Carlos got away better, but Lando, like, was right in his way, so he had to watch breaking so he didn't hit anybody, but Lando's on the out. Like, if Lando would have had a more aggressive start, Carlos would have been able to get past Charles because he was at one point, but then obviously, like, with the, the first few corners, had to back up. But he did react quicker, and he is getting off the start a little bit better than Charles, but whatever. It's fine. He just needs to be ahead of him already. Ferrari will always find a way to put Carlos down. They're putting Carlos in a corner. That that is true. Um, But back to Charles real quick before we move on to who else impressed. Um, He's the first Ferrari podium in Imola since Michael Schumacher 18 years ago, which is a long time. Um, And he's also now ahead in the championship he's in p2 six points ahead of Perez who has stumbled a bit also I just going back to tv direction they were throwing out so many statistics all weekend of like early 2000s and I'm like that wasn't that long ago and I'm like oh my god it's over 20 <laughs> yes it was <sighs> oh we all know that I struggle with time but it really like slapped me in the face when I was like hearing Michael Schumacher in early 2000s I'm like oh wait he actually like didn't race that long ago and I'm like wait no it was a long time ago Yes, Long time exactly. ago being relevant, but still. Anywho. Any yes. who. Um, God, I wish they just wouldn't favor Charles. We all know Carlos need- is a better driver. Yeah. Carlos needs to get his crap together when it comes to quality. Yeah, I mean, it, it feels like, because, like, uh, you you and I have established, and whether this is true or not, this is just what we're seeing, is that he does struggle with sprint weekends, and I feel like he hasn't come out of that sprint weekend struggle, because we had back-to-back in China and Miami, and this is the first non-sprint weekend that we've had in a while, and, yeah. you know, and it's freaking Imola, which is a very challenging track to be functional on, and I also think that they, like, the upgrades that they brought, I don't think were giving Ferrari what they expected because they were really hyping up those upgrades at the beginning of the weekend because, you know, Charles led the, you know, standings right. in FP1 and 2. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, Ferrari was just like, obviously they're, you know, ahead of a lot of other teams in the field, but they're not doing what Ferrari expects and what we expect out of Ferrari as well. I know we keep saying that, but, like, should we be expecting anything out of Ferrari? Like, it's been a few years now since they've been solid. So maybe we're just – our expectations are warped. Well, I think the expectations have always been warped for Ferrari because they – you know, you think about, like, the Schumacher years and the the great heyday of Ferrari, and that's what everybody thinks about, and that's, like, the religion out in Italy. Um, But Ferrari is, you know, what we know as, you know, the the race where driver's spirits go to die. Yeah. Or the the team. Um, So I don't know. But also, speaking of other things, other drivers who have impressed, Oscar Piastri looked great all weekend, and then, you know, admitted, you know, his his team kind of didn't help his case with that impeding incident. Yeah, and I, I mean, I was kind of talking about this, but Oscar with the full package, I think looks better than Lando. 
Yeah, I I think that I don't know if this is necessarily the track to compare them on. And I don't think that we're going to see one until after Monaco to really see, you know, to really get a, you know, clear image in in our heads of like, not, not side by side, but on a normal or on a track that is more conducive to normal formula one cars um because imola is not and monaco will also not be um but yeah he looks really really good he is very fast that mclaren those upgrades are working out really well for them so it's really you know a question of when oscar starts getting really competitive with lando and not if yeah no i i wholeheartedly agree with that statement i was thinking so original quality right was max piastri norris yes i don't know why i used max's first name and the other last names max oscar lando and then oscar gets a penalty so he drops but just thinking logically through this i really think this would have been a great shot and opportunity for oscar to win if he didn't get the penalty, because if he would have had Lando behind him helping defend and Oscar drove really, really well today, took care of his tires. He was, you know, battling with signs for most of the, the day. I really think if he had that buffer of a teammate behind him, he really could have challenged Max for a win. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't necessarily think that he would have been able to beat Max because I think that Max is still significantly more experienced and, you know, struggle with the car or not. I think that counts. Um, But Oscar is definitely showing just how dangerous and how talented of a driver that he is. And I think that, you know, he, I I wouldn't be surprised if we see him get a win this year. Yeah. Oh, that'd be so great for, for young Oscar. Yeah. And then be like, I did it faster than you did Lando. Oh God. Just throw it in his face. Yeah. Oh, um, someone else who I don't want to say surprised because I think we always want the best for this driver and always like want him to do well um, was Yuki. Yuki looked really fast. And at some point in quality, we were like, what is Yuki doing way up there? Like, how's he in second? Right? How's he in third? What's Yuki doing? Um, but I think he did really, really well. And I think he I don't want to say he's finally settling in as an F1 driver, but if we look back a few years, it was like dive bomb Yuki and he was in every wall of every track and yelling on the radio. And now I, it seems like he's just really, I don't know, locked in and he's driving really well this year. Yeah, it's it's really he is single handedly dragging V Carb up the midfield in a car that is not that great. Right. Um, so it's it's really impressive. I think he has they they I think they've got twenty points and he has fifteen of them at this point. Yeah. Um, but if you include Miami in the sprint, this is his third straight points finish in the last two races or the last yeah. two race weekends. So he's he's looking very impressive, and you know. I, I, I like that, you know, seeing success from him. No, I do too. It makes me happy to see Yuki up there. I wish Danny would have the same success. Yeah. Um, I think once Danny kind of locks in as well, the team can definitely be up there in the midfield. Um, but Danny's just, I don't know, man. It seems like he's kind of back in the McLaren struggle days. And I just, yeah, I it's, it is. It's really interesting. We see He's... flashes of it, though. We do see oh, flashes yeah. of old Danny, but he just can't, like, keep it together. But I mean, I to be fair, he did make it into Q3, which I know, like, doesn't right. really mean much considering he finished outside the points. But it was still, you know, I I think we're, we're moving in the direction that we want to see out of him. It's just we're impatient and we want it to happen now. And this isn't even thinking of, you know, whether this is going to help him keep his seat or not for next year. It's just, like in this year and it's i think it's so hard for us to think about formula one in 2024 when we're also thinking of 25 and 2025 and the yeah. regulation um and you know all the driver changes but if thinking about you know wanting to see the best out of daniel for v carb this year we're moving in the right direction 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah um but yeah other than them like i wasn't super impressed with anything like i felt no. like so one thing that really stuck out was Aston Martin for me this weekend in a negative light. Like, I feel like this is 2023 all over again. 
where we're bringing upgrades and they're actually downgrades. Like Fernando kept saying all weekend, like, or after quali and today, it was just like, we don't really know what's going on with the car. We're still trying to learn. We can't fix anything. It is what it is. (laughs) And I'm just like, love the confidence, buddy. (laughs) And it's not what we, it's not what we want. Like he was just out there driving for funsies. They were doing pit stop practices toward the end of the race. Did not take it it seriously at all. Well, I mean, they, it's it was it was a good data gathering a- event for them. It right. just it's not what we expect out of the Aston Martin that we have seen. You know, more so at the beginning of the twenty twenty three season than we have lately. But it's still like this. You know, we want them to be that you know upper midfield type you know tier type team, and they're really just not doing that right now. And I mean, yes, Lance Stroll also finished in the points, but like done. That, that, that doesn't it's really count in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. yeah. I mean, both Mercedes finished in the points and they look like crap. Oh, I will never get over the... Wait, I serious question for you. Once mm-hmm. Lewis Hamilton leaves Mercedes and goes to Ferrari, are we still on team shit on Mercedes? Or where does that put you? <laughs> where do your um, allegiances it's probably gonna- lie? <laughs> I mean, I'm probably going to still shit on Mercedes. Um, we'll we'll see what the landscape is going to look like once we know what the actual, you know, driver, you know, look at us. driver team pairings Only are. Only talking about but... 2025 and 2024. Can't exactly. help ourselves. So it's, it's just, it's really hard. But speaking of 2024 and, you know, also looking back to 23 and 22, I'm a little concerned for Checo Perez. Oh. I feel like that's just like his tagline. You know, if he, well, if he well, was yeah. like a real housewife, it's like, I have a seat, but will I next season? <laughs> I have a seat, but not for long. <laughs> Holding his like tire. But... <laughs> so, here, so here's the thing. That is probably one of the funniest things that I, I've ever had of an image in my head. And I'm totally here for it. And it reminds me of that SNL skit, like the the real promos of 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 um, Bravo TV episode uh, episodes that SNL has done over the years. Yeah. Um, but yeah, re- both Red Bulls looked like trash. But Max, being a phenom, was able to do Max things. To be fair to Red Bull, they were waiting for a safety car that just never came, which nobody expected the safety car to not come because we always have a safety car at Imola. Yeah. Um, but I also don't want this to be the beginning of another one of those streaks that Perez gets into where Perez is just shitty and we don't understand why. And not because I like, yes, as a Red Bull fan, I want him to do well, Double D but enough. I also just Double don't D want, Double D <laughs> I don't want to keep talking about this. And I'm like really tired of this cycle that he gets into. I'm just like, can you just be this decent number two driver at every goddamn race? Catherine, like we need you to be. I bet you my left arm <laughs> that he gets a one season contract at the end of the season. So we have to do all this bullshit oh my God. Again next year. Will it's exhausting. Like, Who's in it? <sighs> it's Checking exhausting. Us. <laughs> I'm tired. Speaking of tired, I think that um, Williams is also tired of their tires, or at the very least, this 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 race. Um, I don't that know. pesky front right. <laughs> I don't know what's happening with Alex this season, but this is not the Alex Albon that we saw last season. And it makes me so sad because he was driving so, so strong. And he has not gotten a point this season. Like, he was, you know, he got P6, P7, P8. He was all not always in the points, but, you know, up there. And he would make it to He was near And now it's just like he's just really struggling. So I don't know if it's the car Um, I know that they changed their steering wheel this year, which was like a big thing. So maybe he's still struggling with that. I don't know. Um, but I just, I'm, I'm struggling. I, I'm, I struggle with him. I, I, I feel it. It Yeah. I mean, at one point, Sargent was running like P12 and it was like, what's he doing up there? Um, and then of course he went back down to, to 17. Yeah. He hadn't pitted. Um, but yeah, I mean, just like, and. I don't, you know, I, I obviously it's not his fault that the front right tire was not put on his car correctly, right. Um, right. but it's just like one thing after another with Williams this year, and they just look so bad. I really, and I, I really don't necessarily think that this is something to do with, you know, 
Alex's ability as a driver. And I really do think that this is more like this car is just bad. Yeah. No, I agree. Well, that's why we, I was saying like a few episodes ago, like I'm really excited to see next year Williams because it seems like JV really, that's his first like true real car under his leadership. Yeah, yeah, it, it should, you know, hopefully it will be better than this and they won't have the, like, we don't have enough parts because we just, like, completely revolutionized our entire process for everything that we do here, which is something that, you know, considering James Vows was the guy at Mercedes who literally had to have a, a working document of here is what to do and what not to do when dealing with Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg as teammates, like, to, to have him come into Williams and just completely change everything and like, you know, completely reformat everything is completely not a surprise, no. but it's like, it's just, it's so hard to see Williams looking as bad as they do when it's like, this is a team that you like, there's such a historic, great, you know, formula one dynasty that they just like have not been forever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's all I have to say about uh, Imola. I mean, we can talk about Carlos yeah. Sainz, too. Like, he just, I don't know, he got P5, whatever it is. I, it is. I think he, he he was, he also disappointed. Like, but like we said, it's, you know, he, he needs to reassert though. himself. I would say it's just like, he doesn't have a choice beyond following team orders. And he can only do, he can only be as good as his team will allow him on Sunday. Can he perform better in quality so that doesn't happen? Absolutely. Exactly. But at the same time, he started P4. He got P5. I don't think that's a bad day. Like, especially with how Ferrari, like Ferrari waited forever to pit him. And I think he did the best under what he was ordered to do. Yeah, no, he did the best under the circumstances, but there are circumstances that he kind of put himself into, and that's that's what I that's what I go back to is you know the beginning of the season we saw this Ferrari driver in Carlos who was like here's what's gonna here's what it's gonna be, and we're not seeing that right now, and what we're seeing instead is you know Charles Leclerc getting a big gift ahead of him. No, I I I, I agree, but I don't think he's changed as a driver. I just think. I mean, I don't know. A lot of this, I think, is mental for every driver. And for him to, like, not have a seat and conversations going on. Like, he is so much more on his plate than Charles Charles does. All Charles has is a new puppy. Oh, my God. Can we talk about the puppy, though? Like, puppy's really cute. I am obsessed, especially since we don't have the Imola cat anymore. It just makes me happy to see, like, another furry friend on the um, track. So that was fun. I'm, yeah, I'm and there it. there was a clip of um, Ted Kravitz in his post qualifying show that he does with ESPN um, that I saw on on social media after qualifying, and it was basically like he is everybody who would just immediately get distracted by a cute puppy and be like, okay, I know we're supposed to talk about motor racing, but look at this What's cute dog. dog. This dog is the cutest dog of the paddock. Look at this good boy, and Obsessed. everyone's like. Yeah, of course, we're going to talk about the dog. Like, you know, I was hiking a couple summers ago and every, you know, every time we turned and there was a puppy, it was like, oh, a puppy. And I got distracted because there was a puppy. It's like, it's completely logical. It is. So logical. I support all the puppies. Mm -hmm. But yeah, anyway, so Carlos, I I think most of that falls on the team, but we'll see in Monaco. He usually does pretty, pretty decent in in Monaco. So we'll see how that goes. And Charles Leclerc typically has the the monaco curse so that's also something exciting to look into and we will cover that in our next Next episode obviously but before we leave let's go over our imola predictions so for pole we both picked max and we were right so we each get a point there for podium we were so freaking close we just picked the wrong (laughs) ferrari driver so we both had max lando carlos and it ended up being max lando charles which Dang I would it. just like to go on the record saying that I had Charles. And then you I did. was like, in t- like an hour or two before we did this, I was like, you know what? It's not a sprint weekend. Like in Carlos, we trust. And now I'm regretting that. Mm-hmm. Um, P10, we both picked Lance Stroll, which it would have, it would have been so good. And he was, he was right around there, but uh, it ended up being Yuki, which is fine. Um, something to note too. Uh, it was the 150th start for Lance Stroll, which in my mind, Lance has been around for, like, three years. 
I know that's not he's, right. He's been around, but, it's, but he's it, been this around is like for his a eighth time. season. He's been around for a while. But I do this it with just, Yuki too. I think like, oh, this yeah. is Yuki's like third season and it's like his fifth. So I, it's hard. Completely understandable. Um, so that brings our point totals for this season so far. Catherine has 19 points and I have 10. But again, all it takes is one weekend to really change things. That's all Catherine yeah. really had, so... We also looked at a uh, biggest surprise in who's going to do a dumb this weekend. Catherine said that Albon was going to have a good weekend. Uh, nope. No. Um, nope. And I said that Ferrari was going to do good. Charles got on the podium for the first time for Ferrari in a really long time. And Imola, Carlos finished pretty high in the points. I'd say that they had a good weekend. Who's going to do a dumb? Catherine said that Charles race engineer is going to have race engineer issues. It actually went okay, there, but we also didn't have much coverage of Charles because he was super anonymous and no one cares what happened to him. Um, and then I said that there was going to be no dumb of the weekend. And I think I'm going to give myself credit for this one because there were no safety cars. Normally, we always yeah. have a safety car in Imola or something goes wrong. And the only really truly thing that went wrong was Albon's front tire. Like that was the only thing that really. But it didn't stop the race, so right. I, I'll I would I would give you the no dumb, and I I, I just want to say to to my Charles race engineer, you know, potential dumb is the one funny thing that we did get out of that because they did make a point to be like, here's his new race engineer, and Javi's not here anymore. Is that they played an audio clip of Charles being told that he was the fastest on track and then immediately after Fernando who was down in P19 takes fastest lap from him and I'm Aww. like that's not how that works but that was funny um and obviously like those those radio calls are not real time but like the timing of it was just hilarious to me and so my good. delirious 6 30 in the morning self so good yeah man that was an early race I mean not for me it was 10 but it's an early yeah, one. well, we're back on that European schedule. <laughs> Not my favorite. No. All right. Well, final thoughts on Imola. I mean, again, I always look forward to this race because it's like the gateway to the European schedule. Um, but I feel like it was just very blah. Besides, like I said, the last five laps. So hopefully, we get better racing in Monaco. We did have good racing. It was good, clean racing. And I think the cars are starting to kind of level out and be more competitive with each other. Yeah. But it was not my favorite race of the season. No. As as a Red Bull fan, I'm glad this weekend's over. And as a Formula One fan, I'm also glad this weekend's over. Yeah. Um, and hopefully we'll we'll get something better out of next week. Yes, definitely. All right, Catherine. Well, that's the end. So that brings us to your fun fact. So what is Catherine's F1 fun fact for this episode? So I saw this on social media and I shared it to, to our Instagram stories at at going dot off dot track. And by the time you get to the episode, you might, it might not, not, words, Catherine, it <laughs> might not be up there anymore. Um, but um, I saw a post about the bottom of the Imolo trophies all have the names of the winners engraved onto the bottom. So like the, the P1 trophy has all the winners, P2 has all the P2s, et cetera. And oh, cool. because we didn't have, an Imola last year because of the horrific flooding, um, they engraved the 2023 winner P2 and P3 as the citizens of Emilia Romagna, which Aww. I just thought was a really cool, really nice touch um, that, you know, is just like a really subtle acknowledgement of like, it was really bad out there. Um, and so, you know, the city has bounced back um, and it was really nice to, to have racing back there again, even if this was not our favorite race of the, se the season at all. <laughs> No, that's really cool and a nice tribute because it's a, it's not a huge city in Italy, Town so it's cool. Thing. Village, yeah. I don't know. Um, so it's it's cool that they they did that tribute. I like that a lot. Yeah, I thought it was cool. Well, thanks for the fun fact. Up next, we will – we're going to Monaco. I'm so excited. Yes! Yeah! This is a race that I think everyone looks forward to every single year. Even if you're not into F1, you know about Monaco. Um, thank you, Cars 2. Um, <laughs> um, but we're going to Monaco. So that will be our next episode. We will have our Monaco Predictions podcast out later this week. This has been our Imola Grand Prix recap episode. Thanks for going off track with us, guys. <laughs>